All right, uh, we lost three minutes already, so I don't think you deserve to lose more. Um, I'm uh, Gabor Hoytri, and this talk is titled A Whole New World for Multilingual Sites in Drupal 8. And, um, and I hope you'll enjoy what you see. So um, I've been working with Drupal for quite some time at this point. I started in 2003, uh, more than a decade ago. And I wanted to use it for a Hungarian website. And it wasn't entirely translatable to Hungarian. So I needed to make fixes to it. And then ever since, I'm kind of stuck in this uh, area of working with multilingual sites. Uh, so I either suck at solving the problem or it's a hard problem. I don't know. But I've seen it several times that, um, that non-English is often an afterthought. So. I, w I go to several conferences and I get badges like this often where my name is not quite right. Or uh, I go to Drupal cons where the website font is not really ready for my name. Or official schedules are printed where my name is not very good. Um, and Drupal is somewhat similar to these things. So Drupal is not a very, Drupal up to Drupal 7 is not a very multilingual system by nature. It's very monolingual, and it makes a lot of assumptions about the language of your content. And if you want to do different languages, then you need to like put it on top and work around things and convince Drupal that you need to do something else. It's not very nice. <clears throat> so we set out to solve this problem in Drupal 8. And we are not the only initiative, obviously, to do nice things in Drupal 8. There's also web services, Spark, Views, a lot of other things. and um, um, I have a confession to make for you that some of these initiatives freak me out when they were announced because uh, I thought this will be way too much for one release in Drupal to tackle. But at the end, I think a lot of these things came together and um, a lot of the other initiatives sol solved problems for us in the multilingual initiative. So, for example, the configuration management initiative did a lot of things that are very useful for us to do multilingual sites or even non-English sites. Uh, views helped us a lot to do um, different language views and, and multilingual front pages and all kinds of other things in Drupal 8. So the, um, the working together of these in initiatives is what's really powerful in Drupal 8, I think. And although I'm standing here to talk about all these things, it's really a work of a lot of people. Uh, we have an automated tool that gathers all the names who, who contributed to uh, this initiative in, uh, in one way or another. And this is just a list of those who at least left one comment on one of our issues. Only the multilingual issues. Uh, so as you can see, there's some names which are bigger, but there's a, a very, very long tail of contributors. So if you count those people, there's almost a thousand people who contributed to this initiative so far. Again. We count this based on comments on issues, not based on commits. Commits will be much lower. And we also had a lot of fun in person at different sprints. This is from uh, Portland, DrupalCon Portland uh, pre-sprints. This is from Batcamp uh, with uh, Platch working very hard on entity translation. This is from DrupalCon Prague. Uh, this is from Drupal Dev Days Barcelona. So we tried to get together at different events and work together as much as possible to resolve these problems. And we have some of these events coming up that I will um, talk to you about a bit later. And in total, we also manage around 1,000 issues. Not all of those are solved yet. There's like three or eight, or seven or 800 issues that we solved and a few hundred left. Um, but I think you'll see that there's outstanding change that happened. So we started with a state in Drupal 7 where you have Drupal core, which is not very multilingual. And then you have your add-on modules, which you need to put on to make it understand language. And one of the modules that's included with Drupal core is locale, which allows you to set up languages and translate the interface to a few languages. But if you only use locale module, you are up for a lot of pain. A lot of pain. Because you set up three languages, you have 100 modules, you need to download 300 files to your system. And then you update 10 modules, and you need to download 30 translations again. So we built a module called l update, localization update, that automates this process. It looks for updates for your translations. So you need to add this module to your site to be sane and not freak out all the time. 
Then Quora has this content translation module, which is kind of nice. It allows you to translate nodes and makes copies of nodes. And then it does not allow you to translate anything else. So you can't actually translate menu items or taxonomy terms or product, products or whatever else. Um, and these copies of nodes are not always understood by other modules, which is also a problem. So then you want to translate menus. So you install IIT NAND module that allows you to translate menus. It also allows you to translate taxonomy terms. And it has all kinds of other glue modules to install to map it to views. There's IAT net views module to map it to views. There's a web form localization module to map it to web form. So now you're up to like 30 modules. Then you're thinking, well, my site name and my slogan is still in English and my uh, user emails are not multilingual. So then you install the variable module, which has variable realm and variable um, store modules. And then now you can translate variables on your site and site settings. And then you're like, oh, so I actually want to make money on this website. So I'm setting up a store on the website. I install Drupal Commerce. None of these support Drupal Commerce translation because Drupal Commerce uses its own entity type. So now you get entity translation. You install entity translation. Now you have two solutions for translating nodes, either the core content translation or entity translation. You have two solutions for translating um, taxonomy terms, either IETNN or entity translation. So you have this mess that you probably, that as at least one or two people in your company may understand. Hopefully. So there's a lot of solutions for everything, probably way too much. Um, I think the problem with Drupal 7 is sometimes you don't have solutions, sometimes you have too much. And then you can choose and then you need to install all kinds of things. And then you have this huge set of modules, and then your other modules will not agree with them. So you need to have like rules to agree with these th set of modules, or you need to have web form agree with them, etc. And then you just end up exploding your site entirely. So the idea for Drupal 8 was to make Drupal understand language, finally, in itself. So we wanted to, um, wanted to have four areas in Drupal where we build out language support very solidly and in a future-proof way to make this um, work better for the future. So we separated language support into its own layer. We have a module called language module that uh, manages base language support for all kinds of things. It's very nice. We have another module called interface translation, which handles the translation of the software itself. Uh, and it's highly improved from what you've seen in Drupal 7. We have another module called Content Translation, which supports translation of any type of content on your website across um, terms, menu items, comments, whatever. And we have a module called Configuration Translation, which allows you to translate anything in configuration. So as I've said, there's a lot of help that we got from other initiatives to make this happen. And you'll see through uh, the slideshow that, that a lot of cross-pollination um, cross happened between us. So let's start with the language pillar, which is the base of everything. And you may think that, oh, language support, it shouldn't be that, that hard, of a, hard of an issue. I mean, there's all those translation things there that's, that are probably much harder. But there's a lot of things that we missed before in language support. So first of all, we wanted to do a very bold step and make a, make a big statement that Drupal is now multilingual. So we made language support the first step in the installer. And we pre-select your own language from uh, almost 100 available languages that we provide you. So if, if, we, if our pre-selection is good, you can just continue with that. Or you can pick any other language. And then on, Drupal just downloads those translations live from the internet and uses that for the installation. So here I pick Arabic. And then it will be right to left. And it will be only in Arabic. So we don't ship with these translations. We download them from live. They are always up to date. <coughs> And we do the whole installation process in that language. So I think that's kind of a powerful message to say that, oh, now Drupal supports multiple languages. And we also wanted to improve Drupal's understanding of language on things. Because the biggest problem in Drupal 7 for a language is we make a lot of assumptions and we don't know explicit information about language on things. Drupal 7 only has explicit information on nodes, users, and path aliases uh, on their languages. And all of the other things are assumed to be in the site default language. So if you change your site default language in Drupal 7, you're up for a lot of pain. Because then all the assumptions will change, and all of the translations will break, and all kinds of hell breaks loose. 
So in Drupal 8, we've extended this basically infinitely. You, you can now assign language to taxonomy terms. You can assign language to views. You can, we even track language on your site information, so we know the language of your site name and your site slogan, and then it's just basically extensible from there. So one, once we know language of everything, then you can basically create new things in any language, and we can ship with English things, and we can translate them to other languages even if you don't create more English things on your website. I think it's very powerful. And we made it very flexible to set that up for... Uh, for our content as well. So we have a content language setup screen where we list all of the content types and you can change how they will behave. So you can say you want to have content that is of article type to appear in a certain language, to be created in a certain language by default or forums to be always English and <clears throat> never show a language selector on them, articles to maybe default to English but show a language selector on them. So you can set up your website based on your assumptions about language on the site. And this extends to all kinds of other things like custom blocks, taxonomy terms, users, menu items, etc. So if you have like reviews posted by users, you can get them created in the active language of the page at that point in time and don't show a language selector so the user has an easy time submitting their product reviews. If you have an English-only forum, you can set that up to be English all the time and don't bother users with uh, selecting a language, etc. So this is very powerful for setting up your language assumptions and allowing and not allowing your users to change those things. This is basically the, the language of the, con of the content that's being created. We've also added language support to blocks. So now you can set up language visibility for each block for one or more language at once. And that allows you to place, remove items in different languages. Uh, there's also a lot of improvements around views. So a lot of these blocks are actually created by views. And you can use language filtering in views um, to, to set up your assumptions for the views that you need uh, on your site. And views integration in Drupal 8 is much bigger than just putting in the module there. It's also uh, providing the front page itself. It's providing the node admin view. It's providing the user admin view. It's providing a lot of areas of your website that you can customize for language support. So, for example, right now, our default front page view renders all of your translations of the things that you promoted to the front page. But it's very easy to change to filter for something or to always display the posts in the language that was negotiated for the page or based on some language fallback rules, etc. So we, we expanded some of the views language support itself, and we also use views for a lot more things now, so you can customize it more easily. You don't need to like work around and, and, uh, and uh, just uh, push it um, onto the system. So since I talked about language selection, there's obviously a lot of things that we can improve for language selection as well. So Drupal 8 has a lot more flexibility in that area. We put the URL language selection set up all into one user interface in a very concise manner. So now we summarize all of your language URLs in one place. You can see everything and, and test how it works. Um, we built in uh, account preferences for administration pages. We built in browser language code mapping. So Drupal 8 now understands that that some language codes may not be the same across the, the world that Drupal understands them. So we can map them now to external language codes. And we made this, the fallback language configurable. So it's not falling back all the time on the site default language. It can fall back on a specific explicit language that you set up. So again, we are working towards not making assumptions on your behalf, but letting you say Drupal what you want. So you can make Drupal fall back on whatever language you pick. You can administer your site in a specific language, even if you don't understand Chinese. You can edit Chinese posts in English or whatever other language you understand. Uh, if you need to support uh, languages that have various codes around the globe, you can set up those mappings here, etc. So this is all built into Drupal 8 Core as well. We've also built in, in this area, transliteration support to Core. So this is very visible in the machine name. Uh, system. So if you create a, something called an article, it will obviously be called an article. But if you pick something else, like this Hungarian uh, word here, then it will transliterate that down to English characters. And the same works across all kinds of other languages. So if I do something in Russian, that will work as well. Or if I do something in Czech, that will work as well. 
So we only build this in now for machine names. The base system is there to be used for all kinds of other things. So it can be used for file name, file upload renames. It can be used for um, um, path aliasing. But we don't have path auto in core either to map this into. And we had reservations about building this right away into file renaming and uploads in Drupal core. But these are possible to build and contrib as well. So the base system for transliteration is in core and used for machine names. And um, finally, uh, English can be deleted, which I think will be good news for anyone who's running a purely non-English website. So you don't need to have English lingering around on the system. You can just get rid of that. In fact, if you install Drupal in a foreign language, it will not create English on the site at all. The system understands that all the views, content types, permissions, uh, input formats, etc., that come with Drupal are in English. It will understand that fact, even if you don't have English as a configured language on the site. And it will also understand that all the text coming from source code is in English. But you can delete English, and that will not bother your language selectors and other areas on the site. So I think that's pretty powerful. And this was only one fourth of what the multilingual initiative already achieved in Drupal 8 core. So you can delete English on your site. You don't need, you don't need to add that all to the system. We've expanded language selection a lot. Uh, we made it very flexible now. We have block visibility per language, so you can hide and show things based on different languages. Uh, views is in core, and we expanded language support in views. And views is used for a lot, pa a lot of pages and blocks. So you can very dynamically set up language support in your pages and areas. We have very flexible language default configuration for content, so you can set up your site in a way that makes sense for your users and assumptions. We have a lot wider assignment capability for a language, so we know language of basically anything in Drupal now. And we are first in the installer, which is a pretty bold statement for language support, I guess. So that was one fourth of what we achieved in Drupal core. And the second piece is interface translation. So already the installer language selection uses this interface translation download capability, which is now separated into a separate module, as I've said. But it's also built into the system further on. So we look for automated translation updates for all of your modules and themes and all kinds of projects that you have on your site. And we'll download all those updates later on and uh, make your site always up to date in those translations. But if you don't want to translate your site, if you just want to set up a search index where you assign languages to things, like a PDF file store or whatever, you don't need this module. But if you want to translate your site into other languages, then you would install this. We also centralize translation file tracking, file um, downloading to one location. So we put everything into one location instead of what Drupal 7 had with different directories. Uh, that is very cool for deployment because you may not want automatic translation updates on your live site. Maybe if your translation team now decides that uh, that nodes should be called something else now or logout should be something else, then your client would freak out if your user interface changes on the site suddenly. So we built in this so that you can do the automated translation updates on, on development sites and staging sites, quality assure your updates, and then you just push this directory to the live site and run a drush command to import all those files, and then you can disable the automated updates on the live site. So this is very deployment friendly for these translation updates. We also realize that you may not like all of the things that your translation teams do. So there's not always shiny, sunny understanding between the translation team members of translations. So you may want to have something else on your site for certain uh, words. So we put in customization tracking to the system so you can diverge from the community provided translations on your site. And we will protect all those uh, customizations from being uh, overwritten from the community updates. So you can keep all your customizations um, on your site. And since we are tracking all of these, you can export those translations, and you can take them to other customer sites and reuse your customizations on top of the translations on other customer sites. We also made it the imports uh, much better for a low resource environment, so it will not time out anymore. It's pretty nicely implemented now. We've also built a whole new user interface for interface translation itself which is much easier to use now. So you probably haven't even seen this interface in Drupal 7 because it's totally unusable. In 8, we built in this nice table of source string and target string. We put in support for singular plural translations, however many you have. 
None of these is available in Drupal 7 due to several technology limitations. So you can just translate in place. We highlight all the changes for you. So if you go for a coffee, you come back, you, st you still see what changed. And then you can save all of those things. And later on, you can filter this down to only for your customizations, and you will see what you've actually customized on the site. So I mean, it's very easy to do these translations and do the customizations. Um, I don't think um, that there should be a problem anymore. We also realized that English is not one single language. So English is multiple languages in the world. There's people prefer different words. We are, um, we are aware of this. So what we did is uh, we built in capability to modify English strings, which I call translate to English. Uh, so if you edit the English language itself, it will have a check checkbox that says enable interface translation to English. You check that checkbox, and it will show up as a target language for translation, and it will be able to translate the very same way as you would do with anything else. So in this example, I pick login, I, I translate it to sign in, and then I save that, and then it will show up as sign in on the front end. So it's very easy to now customize English as well to your needs. And, and then again, export these things as customizations that we use on different customer sites. So that was the second pillar of improvements in Drupal 8. So now you can translate to English, which is not enabled by default, so it will not hinder performance if you, are not, if you don't want this feature. Uh, we have a whole new interface for our translation process. We track custom translations, so you can diverge from, from the community, export these, and reuse on customer sites. We centralized all the files into one directory, so it's very deployment friendly. You can uh, do quality assurance on translations and push them out to live. Uh, we built in this auto-download capability, so you don't need to manually do these downloads, and you can just uh, focus on what matters for you. And uh, we put this into a separate module, so if you don't want to translate your site, but you want to track languages, then you can do them separate as well. So that was the software translation for Drupal. But obviously, you also create a lot of content on your site. So uh, we wanted to have solutions for this as well. And as I've said in Drupal 7, the biggest problem is there's two solutions. Uh, there's one in core that copies nodes to have multiple instances, and then it builds translation sets out of them. And there's entity translation that translates fields. And entity translation actually supports more types of entities. Um, but it's confusing what you pick, and modules may not support one or the other. So what we decided in Drupal 8 is to pick one method and then implement it for all content entities. So there's one basic solution, and then everybody in the contributed module space would have an understanding of what's going on here, and they can support this, and uh, everything will be hopefully happy. So the question is what uh, content entities even in Drupal 8? There's uh, entities in Drupal 7, and all of the entities in Drupal 7, I believe, are content entities. In Drupal 8, that's not true. Content entities are mostly things that end users would create on your site. So those are like nodes, users, comments, taxonomy terms. If you have auto-tagging vocabularies, they may be created by users as well. Contact messages is an interesting thing in Drupal 8. Uh, menu items may be created with nodes as well. So these are things that are usually get created on your site, and they are not like the setup of your site. Uh, that's one of the ways to define content entities. Another way is uh, most of these can have fields on them, configurable fields. So you can put extra fields on contact forms, for example, in Drupal 8, which is very fancy. Or you can put extra fields on comments or taxonomy terms. So content translation support is basically covering this green circle of those things. And as I've said before, we have language assignment on all of these. And then we have field translatability on each of them as well. So if you go back to the same screen and now you have content translation enabled, we have another set of checkboxes on the left side that says translatable. And uh, you can use those checkboxes to actually make the translation happen. And yeah. And uh, so, you, so now I have the setup that I've had before. I can say I want to actually make articles translatable. Now I have all the fields of articles. I have the title field. I have the body field. I have common settings. I have image field. I don't translate the file itself, but I translate the alt text and the title text and taxonomy tags, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very flexible. So you can set translation for 
uh, for the entity bundle level, the content type level, and then you can set it up for each field individually and in some cases under the field level as well for image fields, for example. So you can say you want to share uh, images but not the text that is related to the images. That's a very good use case for products, for example, where you have the same product image but you want to have different text on it. And I think the best part of this basically is spans over everything in content. And it has the same very simple user interface that Drupal 7 had. You have a translation tab, you go there. It has a summary of all your translations available. You can review and add translations. You add the translation, and then um, you can use this nice note form that's new in Drupal 8 to actually add that translation. So it's very easy to use. It's very flexible to configure. That page is probably becoming crazy once you set up all your site, but it starts out very simple and it lets you learn the system and get into it as more and more complex needs arise. We do have some things that are not ready in this area. Uh, property translation, aka base field translation, is in the works for some things. We uh, are very close with some supporting all of the node properties like author, uh, promoted, published, etc., to be translatable. So you can have a translation published, but not another translation. Or you can track authors differently for translations, etc. Uh, and we have uh, menu items and taxonomy terms still lingering a bit to uh, support property translations, but they already support translatability of any uh, configurable field on it. Also, there's a migration path in Drupal 8 now that migrates your data from Drupal 6 or 7 to Drupal 8. And that's totally in the works. Uh, we need people to help with that. So if you want to be involved, we have sprints happening that uh, you'll hear more about later. But we've also made a lot of other systems compatible with uh, this translation system. So if you use core search, now we index all of the entity translations separately, and they will appear as separate results. We put in a lot of effort to uh, the search API in core to know all the language information we pass on. So if you use Apache Solar or anything, that will know everything about language around content. And when you search, we also pass on the language of the page. We also put in language support to node access. So you can have different access per language for the same node. So you can like sell access in German for things and sell access in Italian for things and charge for both of them separately. You can totally do that. Uh, so this is the language pillar, the third pillar in Drupal 8, where <coughs> we built in a system based on fields and subfield setup for translatability. It supports all content entities in core. It works with node access. It works with the core search system. It works with search API. Um, we have the property system still in the works, and uh, hopefully we'll finish that by Drupal 8.0. And there's a migration path still in the works, which may not be released with 8.0, but that's a global policy uh, that 8.0 may not include all the migration uh, things in there. So that's for content. And uh, this had some solutions in Drupal 7, but the saddest area that we've had in Drupal 7 was configuration translation. Because configuration translation is very, very miserably desperate in Drupal 7. So you have variables, you have all kinds of data tables, you have separate APIs, and all of the other things in Drupal 7 that's very hard to support. And what's a huge win for us in Drupal 8 is this new configuration system, which works with entities and global configuration as well. So entities in Drupal 8 may be configuration too. So this is what I said earlier, that there's these content entities that are fieldable and possibly created on the front end. And we also have configuration entities that are back-end configuration that may have multiple instances like views, vocabularies, contact categories, fields, menu items, input formats, editor configuration, user roles, whatever. And we have global configuration like site information, user emails, etc., which are global to the site. And this blue circle is what the configuration translation system supports. So the biggest message of this slide for you is Drupal 8 multilingual either supports you if you are a content entity or if you some way somehow use configuration system. If you do something else, you have your own table that you store your magic data, then you are on your own. We don't support you. So you should apply either the content entity system or the configuration system to your code, your data. 
If you don't apply that, then you will be in a sad state like path aliases are, which are non, not configuration and not content. And they retained language support in Drupal 8, but they have their own magic one-off language support implementation. So if you, ha if you are outside of the blue and the green circles in Drupal 8, then you need to implement language on your own. We don't have anything to support your language needs in that case. But if you are in configuration, you are in a very happy place. So what we have in configuration is we track language on every configuration file. So we know all the views that have been shipped with Drupal core are in English. And if you run a French only site, you will definitely not create views in English because why would you do that? You will create them in French. So we know all the views that you created are in French and all the views that came with Drupal are in English. And we will still be able to translate the English ones to French and display them in French and use the French ones in French as you created them. And then later on when you decide, oh, I want to expand into Germany as well or Poland or whatever, then you add those new languages and we have all this language information and translation and we'll be able to translate them to other languages as well. It just magically works off, off from there. We also store these language overrides with configuration. So it supports all the deployment capabilities of um, the configuration system. It supports the Git workflow that's possible with configuration staging and deployment. It's very nice. We integrated this with the interface translation module. So all the configuration that's shipped with Drupal core, like website feedback contact category, is translatable as part of the software. Because as we see, there's a lot more configuration-based Drupal site building now as uh, coding. So here I enable the language switcher block to show you that it actually works. And then I will translate the website feedback contact category for you. So I enable language switcher. I have English and Hungarian on the site. I don't have anything translated. So if I switch, nothing happens. But then I go in and I translate website feedback to Hungarian and show you that it actually works. So I use the user interface translation that's used to translate the software, Drupal, the software. And website feedback is part of the software because it was shipped as default configuration with the software. So I can translate it. And then be happy with that. And then uh, if I see it in Hungarian, it will be Hungarian. If I switch back to English, it will be in English. So this is very powerful because Drupal has a lot of things in configuration now. Input formats, user roles, uh, editor configuration, node types, field configuration, um, views, actions, I don't know, basically everything that you can think of on the back end. So we, can, we will be able to translate all of those, those things on localized Drupal.org and ship translations for Drupal. So when you install Drupal in whatever other language, all of those things will be possible to translate in core without adding any other contributed module. Some of that integration is still in the works. So we have uh, most of the new APIs supported on localized Drupal.org, but some of it is still in the works. So Drupal 8 is already translatable there, but it's uh, still in development, so it may not be the right time to translate it all. We also made it possible to translate any configuration on your site. So obviously, you will create views in French, German, whatever, and you will want to translate it to other things. We made that very easy. So here's this block, for example. It has a contextual link that says configure block. It has a translate operation. I can just go and add a translation for Hungarian, translate that label to Hungarian. And then the block itself will be Hungarian, easy. And then I also have my website name and my slogan, and I want to translate that to Hungarian as well. So I go to configuration, site information. Yay, it has a translate tab. I go to the translate tab. Then I have the languages listed there. I can add Hungarian. It has my site name slogan. I can translate it to Hungarian. And then, surprise, when I saved all of this, my contact category will still be translated from before. And my site name, my slogan, and my block label will be translated to Hungarian as well. So here's my site name, my slogan, my block label, and the contact category is still in Hungarian. So this is all included with Drupal 8 core. There's nothing else to add to Drupal 8 core. You can do the same for views as well. So you have a view. You just go there. It has a translate operation. You can translate all of the labels, all of the display names, all of the default tags, the empty text, the pager, labels, whatever you want. And this is all made possible by the configuration system. 
And Vijay has a talk right now in another room about the technology that's enabling this. So unfortunately, we will not be able to attend that, but hopefully they make a recording of that available. And you can look at that later on as well. So I'm really excited about the configuration area because Drupal 7 core had nothing for this. And Drupal 8 basically uh, covers everything possible and in a future-proof way that also works with Contrib. So what we provide is a full translation module that, let, that provides in-place translation features, translation tabs on all of the configuration pages, site name, views, blocks, user roles, whatever, menus. Um, we use configuration overrides that are deployable with the configuration system. This works for anything in configuration. And um, it works with uh, all of the ship configuration that's in English and we'll be able to translate it from localized Drupal.org so you can get a fully French, fully Italian, fully Spanish site when you install uh, Drupal 8. So just in summary, in Drupal 8, we wanted to solve problems from Drupal 7 in a way that is future compatible. So we built out the systems uh, in all of the areas uh, to solve all of the problems that we've um, identified as major bottlenecks and make them available in a way that will work with your contributed modules. So we built in a language layer that assigns language to everything in the system that has better language um, detection capabilities with more features and it has very flexible language configuration for content as well. We built in an interface translation system that automatically can translate your website to languages, um, to any number of languages. It can download interface translation right away in the installer. It tracks your customizations and protects them from being overwritten from the community and has a very nice, fresh, new interface. We have content translation that works for everything, not just nodes. It applies one way that can reproduce the old content translation system by making everything translatable or some of that translatable if you want to and applies to anything. It will be future compatible with Drupal Commerce as well and rules and all kinds of other contributed modules. And we have configuration translation that tracks language on everything in configuration works with the deployment process in configuration and lets you translate everything in place in Drupal core and will be uh, future compatible with Drupal 8 contrib as well. So I think uh, Tobias Sokler put this very well in a tweet that he said that Drupal 8 core with content and configuration translation is more multilingual than Drupal 7 with any number of contributed modules installed. So I think that's not bad to achieve for, for an initiative. Um, but, but there's always more to do, right? So we haven't solved all of your problems, unfortunately. This may look like there's the dream nirvana and everything is now solved. Um, the biggest thing that we did not solve is workflow. Um, so if you want to have a workflow and integration with third-party services, so if you want to work with third-party translation services and have a translation workflow where you send things for translation, get it back, review it, publish it, etc., then that gap is still to be solved by contributed modules. There's a nice module called TMGMT that's being built by nice folks in uh, Switzerland and across Europe as well. And there's another nice module called Lingotech, which is uh, interfacing with a third-party service as well that allows you to put in... Um, easy interface translation workflows into your site. So there's several solutions to that problem. We did not build those into Drupal. What we focused on is the base language, is the base system to understand language across everything so that contributed modules will understand that this is now the new reality and will be compatible with that. But that was our most important thing, I think, to achieve, and we uh, mostly achieved that. So uh, I think that's pretty great. If you want to get involved, there's still more things to do, as you've heard, then we have a website at drupal8multilingual.org that allows you to see all the things that we are working on. There's localized at drupal.org where the actual translations of the software are happening. We have a Twitter account at DMI, and we have sprints coming up. I will unfortunately need to leave later today for back home Hungary, so I will not be able to sprint a lot here. but. We have a huge sprint coming up in Seged, Hungary in three weeks, uh, which is part of Drupal Dev Days. It has almost, so the event itself has almost 300 people attending. We have 15 of the top Drupal 8 core developers coming. We have two core committers. We have the testbot maintainer. We have the Drupal.org team coming. We have all kinds of goodness there. So if you are interested in looking into actual code for Drupal 8, then that's pro probably your best opportunity coming up. 
It's in three weeks, and there's probably like 15 tickets left at this point, so hurry up and buy your tickets. We also have sprints in uh, Austin coming up in May, and I totally forgot to add Nice Camp. So I'm also going to Nice Camp in New York, which is in April. That is also a very good opportunity. It will be hosted by the United Nations in New York. And the United Nations, you may guess, they have something to do with several languages. So they are interested in this topic, and we're going to sprint on uh, multilingual at the United Nations in April as well. So if you are around there, uh, join us. If you want to just enjoy what we achieved, you can try out Drupal 8 right now. Uh, you have nothing to need to install on your own computer. You just go to drupal.org slash 8. It has this nice green button that says test Drupal 8 dev. You click that, you get a Drupal 8 instance in your browser that is just for you for half an hour. You can play around and see what's going on. And once again, I would like to thank all of these people who made this happen because I'm just trying to cat herd this thing. But all of these um, people are actually those who did, these, did this work and uh, made your life a lot easier, hopefully, uh, coming Drupal 8. That's it.